G'day and welcome to the Ball Boys AFL Fantasy Podcast. Today we are reviewing round four and all the pain that came with it. Let's go! G'day and welcome again to the Ball Boys AFL Fantasy Podcast. I'm Mitch Casey. You can find me on Twitter at Ball Boys Fantasy. Joined by Luke on a Monday night after a late uh, finish to the round. How are you, mate? Yeah, I'm going good. What a weekend again, hey? We, mm. we had it all. We had laid outs. We'll talk oh, about those in a little yeah. bit. We had I think captains some, misfiring. Yeah, captains. And, we had some low scores overall, but... Um, it's all part of the adventure, isn't it? All part of the adventure. <laughs> yes, exactly. Why Adventure's we... a generous word, isn't it? <laughs> That's why we do it, mate. That's why we do it. So, uh, before we get stuck in, how did you, how did the Ox Longs or, or should I call them the Ox Shorts? Yeah, uh, well, those, those who follow this weekend, those who follow me on Twitter will see I had to make a few adjustments to to the team name and to the um, the difficulty level. I think yeah, it is yeah. There, so. I, I don't know if it works that way, but well, we have to shout out to the AFL Fantasy Gods <laughs> if they. Uh, you know. Now I've flicked it over to easy difficulty. I should just be on the up and up, I'd imagine. Breeze through. Yeah, and it's that the, the Ox Shorts dinner. now, so, <laughs> which I think is they're aptly named based on how based, it's been going. Well, How yeah. about Mitchman? How did Mitchman go? Uh, Mitchman went okay, uh, considering the, the bullets that went our way, um, especially uh, the other night. I think, obviously, you got a bit... Uh, lucky in the end with the the guy we traded in yeah. uh, in English, yep. and uh, so that helped me out. It was sort of I would say just uh, above par, kind of around moved up a couple of thousand spots, but ready now to attack <laughs> the uh, the next or to pounce, pounce. To, to throw you back. Do like that word don't to you? the the preseason onto the uh, upgrade season because we're moving from fix up rounds now, yep. Luke, into. The fun part of the season, in my opinion, where we're starting to get premiums into our side, getting rookies and mid prices out of our side, and uh, charging towards the uh, the buy rounds where we're going to make our big moves in the rankings. So it's really an interesting one, isn't it? Because you know, to this point, I'm very poorly ranked, but I, I look back and I think. I don't feel like I've made any poor decisions. I just have been unlucky, made... and, and you know that's that's yeah. what's going to separate a lot of the rankings early. Yeah, stages. at the moment, and that's what I want to kind of hope, hopefully get across to people who might be in a similar situation is that you, you might be sitting there thinking, "Gee, my, my rank absolutely stinks," but yeah. you haven't felt like you've made poor decisions. It's just a matter of sticking fat from here on in and just staying really disciplined. Because I think if you if you get a bit further behind, then you can start to reach and clutch yeah. and just try and stay disciplined and just. Yeah, you know, eke it back around at a time. Yeah, if we've been focusing on cash generations, getting in those guys that are going to make us money, get, jumping on those mid prices that are at the right value at the right time, yep. um, those things will start to snowball. And over these next sort of six to ten rounds, you're going to find that that pays off. So stay disciplined, stay diligent with the process. Um, you know, week stick to, to week. The process. Yeah, stick to the process. Here. Yeah, Philadelphia <laughs> over here. Um, so we, you know, stay at it, but we'll get there, guys. We'll uh, we'll see the rewards come through. The coaches that have been sort of sidewaysing mm. and not getting those rookies and things like that, you'll they'll be found out soon enough. Um, but you know, the rankings will change soon. So let's get stuck into uh, jump into our first segment. One of our favorite segments. Let's get onto this one here. And the winner. Smith You're an embarrassment to what you do, mate. You're an embarrassment. All right. Bogs and flogs. Bogs and flogs. So we're going to switch it up again. I'm taking bogs. the positive this week. And uh, starting again with the, oh, it seems like a while ago now, the <laughs> Lions and Pies game. I was going to say, you're taking positive this week, but you were far from positive watching Warple this afternoon. Oh, yes. Well, <laughs> we'll get to that, man. So he's out of here. Um, <laughs> but Lions versus Pies. Again, I hate to say it, but Nick fucking Dacos is the best on ground again. How good to be a Dacos. I wonder what it feels like to be a Dacos yeah, owner. It must be nice. Mm. It must be nice. I reckon Wouldn't I'm, know. <laughs> <laughs> I reckon I'm going to feel it this week, this weekend coming. Oh, I reckon you, you're jumping on board, you, mate. You might not be. What did he have? He had 38 disposals. I think he even had in that second quarter. Like I'm just trying to find it. I'm pretty sure. It was like three points or something and then just... One disposal. Spots. One yeah. disposal. Yeah. Um, yeah, had seven points in that second quarter. Still managed to score 120 Six for the entire game. Top scored that game. Two goals. And obviously... If I trade him in this week, but you know what's happening. Oh, right? he's going to suck it up. Please do. <laughs> Please trade him in. 
<laughs> Just for put, everybody. Put the Ox Long Curse on him. I'd love to see it. But who's our flog for that game? Flog Dunkley. I yeah. think it's it, maybe it's a He bit doesn't hard. look good to the eye to me either. He looks slow. The problem is the weight of expectation, I think, there, isn't it? If, you, if you're looking at a different player, you think, yeah, okay, well, he's popped out. What did he pop out? Mm. 80 or something. But the expectation is that you can put a VC on him, that you might be able to get a good score. He just, compared to the weight of expectation that he held at the start of the year. I mean, we're, um, four, we're four rounds in and he's averaging 93. Yeah. Look, it's, it's obviously... Maybe he liked being bevoed. Maybe he, oh, there's some there's some merit to, to thinking that like obviously he benefited from like starting forward and getting some of those marks. I think also I noticed on the weekend especially that he was very fumbly with the ball. I don't know if he's not used to the dewy conditions, likes playing under the roof or something like that. I don't know, but he just uh, yeah doesn't seem to get a lot of those marks. And yeah. um, maybe it's the new teammates just choosing to go somewhere else instead of him. Um, Doesn't look yeah, good early I'm, days, but I'm definitely lowering my expectations to what I had in yeah. the preseason. He benefits from the line that he's on, so don't please don't think this is us advocating for trading oh, for you, him. You definitely, keep, you keep you're definitely for sure. not trading him. Yeah. So, uh, who do we have in the bog in the North Carlton game, mate? Uh, the North Carlton game. I don't know if we've given this man his props yet, but Harry Sheasel. Mate. What did you? If I told you that Harry Sheasel was the her, third highest averaging AFL fantasy player. You know, if we said that at the start of the preseason, you'd absolutely fall off your chair laughing it's at something. Wild, but mate. it's um, it's it's the reality that we're living in right now. He hasn't made an appearance yet, I don't think, from on the ball boys, big boys. And I reckon after this week, that has to change from now on. He's he going to be a big boy this week. He's a big boy. Given he it the is, big boy like, like I said, the third highest scoring uh, fantasy player. It goes Clayton Oliver. It goes Tim English. And then it goes Harry Sheasel in third Fuck in amongst eight. those names, averaging 118. The so. best part about that whole situation is that we're going to be able to DPP him soon as well. Oh, so. the fans for doesn't matter. He yeah. is he's a premium. He is absolutely a it's premium. Crazy. And uh, it's crazy. I think this is this is the the best rookie performances I've ever seen. So yeah. Look, my flog, flog <laughs> from that game, I think you know where this is going. This is but personal my, my first two flogs were my VC and then my C. So <laughs> oh, when, no. when you have to give flog status to both your VC and your C, you know it's been a bad week. I think yeah. my score this week could have been semi-respectable. It if, could have been, yeah. If not for putting the captain on Doherty. So, yes. um, yeah, I and think it just sucks that it's at the start of the week as well and it, it, put it a, sets up the, it put the rest a dampener, of the weekend. It put a dampener on, on the weekend. It probably contributed to the tweet I just put out before. <laughs> <laughs> I think a lot of yeah. people were disappointed with Doc, but a lot of people were disappointed with uh, with putting the VC on Doc. Unfortunately, I was yeah. very disappointed with the C on him. The C, but yeah. I you weren't alone. There were other coaches out there, some respectable coaches. I think DC Caterpillars also had the C yeah. on him well, as well. The problem is so. I listened to the ball boys, big boys, and you fucked me, mate. So. Oh, yes. And I've heard there's this new thing going around in fantasy where you, you make choices for yourself, but then you blame other people. So. Yeah, I've heard that as a thing. So I, that's getting I, around look, I can take it. I can take it. <laughs> so um, my plan is to blame you. I, my my <laughs> defense is I think that that was just the best reverse rocket of my career so far. <laughs> yeah. Putting him right up there. I don't have him in my team, so uh, didn't work for Clayton Oliver, obviously, and hasn't worked since I've been putting him at number one and two every week. But uh, yes, sorry, Sam Doherty sorry, is Doherty. a worthy flog of this game. The next game, Adelaide Freo, best on ground. This is um, a guy that has also responded to my rocket from last yeah, week, nice. Jordan Dawson. You were pitching a 10 on the weekend in oh, that, that new role. Too. I was Tell very, us very happy. Uh, playing inside mid, looked really good yeah, doing it. 122 points, even in the last quarter, went back in defense and took kick out. So... <laughs> A lot of people were worried about the inside mid roll. Um, I was on the record last week saying that this could be a very good thing, and I'm very encouraged about what I saw on the weekend. He strikes me as the type that won't um, go into the midfield and um, get lost in there like a Jaden Short or a Crisp. I think he's a guy that will get tackles. He'll still get his disposals. He's in and under. The teammates look for him. So uh, very encouraged by Jordan Dawson and what he did on the weekend. Yeah, good call on that one. Flog from this game. I think for you and I just watching this game, Hayden Young goes without saying that he's just... He just he's, he's a permaflog. Despite <laughs> <laughs> a permaflog, I like yeah. that. We should get him in the soundbite somehow or something. But yeah. also, I'm I'm not a Laird owner, but I imagine uh, if I was, I'd be for those boys. Yeah, yeah I'd be pretty unhappy with Lady. So Lady and and Hayden Young, you guys can share the flog for oh, for that game. Uh, I'm, I've got to have a look and see what he's averaging right now. What is? Let me I'll sort by price, but he's going it's down. Good. I'm scrolling down. Has he got the targets? To, have you got the to, targets on him? He well, Down we'll talk scope. about we'll talk about that one there in a second. Mm. But averaging ninety one point five. So for a guy that you paid what for one 
120. Yeah, one, so, yeah, so he's going 30 under is what you paid for. Jesus and uh, obviously, Christus. you got him in for a captaincy option, and he is not delivered on that thus not happening. far. Not happening. Um, and he's also had a 140 in there as well. So, yeah, lots of stinkers. Um, moving on to the next game here Richmond versus uh, Western Bulldogs, a nail biter in the end. Yeah, I didn't get to watch this one. What was, what was the go? It, uh, it was a good game. I think Richmond started really slow, but got better in the second half. But. Um, couple of key mistakes when the weather went uh, south, did them in. But I've got a tie on here. Best on ground for the entire game. Tim yep. English on debut for the Mitchmond and also for the Ox Longs. Yep. Uh, 145, just dominated in a matchup that's typically been pretty hard for him in the past. But I also want to give a shout out to Taranto's last three quarters because <laughs> he had five points at quarter time, two disposals. You and texted me, this is fucked. This is absolutely <laughs> fucked. It was a, I ended up with a C on him after initially wanting to go Josh Kelly but yep. after the Wits debacle um, had to bypass me getting in Josh Kelly uh, so went down the ball boys list and Tim uh, Taranto was the next guy on there was cussing him out at three quarter time sent out a very early rocket and Timmy Tar- Taranto he responded, uh, responded eh? with a huge uh, 114 so 109.3 quarter uh, effort was uh, was very good for my boy. A worthy there. bog, worthy bog. Just to give context, we obviously both Mitch and I um, were owners of Wits up until about five minutes before this game, and I, I was actually off to. You were at a Bucks party. I was yeah. off to a Bucks party. People must think all I do is drink. It is. <laughs> You're <laughs> such a Bucks head, party. Just big piss head. Um, yeah. And uh, Mitch, Mitch texts me, Wits is going to be out, and I'm sitting in the car just. Shit myself, thinking, what do I do? What do yeah. I do? I'm on, the, I'm on the phone. I'm on the app. Yeah, thinking, it's a bit clunky sometimes. Yeah, and I eventually made made the change and got wits out and bought English in. So it probably saved. It probably saved the season, to be honest. If I had to cop a wits donut, I oh, think I might have thrown yeah. the toys. <laughs> that would have been very ugly. That time. So we got English in. So well done. He's he's the bog. Um, I've, the flog here. I've actually typed it in the wrong spot because this actually wasn't the Saturday night game. But I'll talk about it here. Anyway. Yeah, let's do that. Let's <laughs> do that because the Saturday night scheduling from the AFL. This weekend, Shambles. it it blows my mind that you have two games at the same time on a Saturday night when you have the time slot on Friday the, night, the Friday, and and people on Twitter were reacting the same. It's like yeah. get that game there. You have no overlap. Everyone can watch every game. Everyone else is you know you know sitting around yeah. you know finger each other's assholes, and we can't. <laughs> <laughs> we can't. What? I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. What? <laughs> have you not heard that saying? Oh, no. I have. But like, is there something worse than the explicit tag that we can put on this podcast? <laughs> Banner it. But, my, uh, my dad listens to this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck was that? No, but just, we're all sitting around here twiddling our thumbs, like doing like nothing on a Friday night. Oh, like bitches. everything's closed. No, like I, what I, are we doing? I agree. Yeah. Well, I wasn't doing what you were suggesting that we were doing. But, no, 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 but so I don't know how that's worked out to be my flog from the Richmond Western Bulldogs game. Well, but. it's just a general flog for the weekend because uh, yeah, you know it's yeah. what are we doing in terms of the scheduling? <laughs> like Friday night, you've got it right there. And not let's let's have two uh, let's have two games on Saturday night. Sorry, <laughs> just oh my god, something's <laughs> taken over me. She's had two sips of that beer. Okay, let's move on to the next game. Who's your bog from the St Kilda uh, Gold Coast game? Bog for the St Kilda Gold Coast game. I want to give another shout out for a specific part of the game. Brad Crouch's second half, and uh, shout out to a good friend of the podcast, Holmesy. Had Mate. the balls to put the C on him, traded uh, him in, and put the C on traded him, him and put the C on him, and was. I think shitting his you know I, pants by half time. I think Holmes he um, was walking to the nearest bridge at quarter time. And yeah, I think <laughs> about, uh, to, about to take a leap. But yeah, uh, that he's come back and, and Crouch definitely a worthy well, bog. What did he actually have by half time? I think it was. Um, it wasn't good. Whatever it was, it was, it was like Tim nineteen Trent. or something like that. Yeah, I think at half time ended right. up with one hundred and twenty five. So he's, he's had had over a hundred points in the second half. Done a uh, done a Zach Merritt uh, yeah. essentially and uh, saved his score. And Massive. as a unique. That would have been a very nervous first half, but a very exciting second half. So, best Definitely. on ground, Crouch's second half. Floggery uh, from the St Kilda Gold Coast game. I've actually got two flogs to speak about. Noah Anderson. And the reason that I'm saying that a bloke that scored 150 is a flog is because... <laughs> yeah, explain yourself so, here, Luke. So, he's underperformed with an average of mid-80s, I believe. He was for pretty the first poor the last few games. So, yeah. everyone's thinking, okay, undervalued premium. We might be I, able to I had on. my eyes on him. He was what? someone that was falling to and us. so, what he's gone and done is he's pumped out 150, which is actually greater than his break-even... So his value will go up. Yeah. But then what he's also done is he's left us at a point where we have one outlier score that we have to now it's sort of start to It's a little bit awkward think. now. We have yeah. to start to think about making a decision on this outlier score. Do you go, okay, well, he's had three games at 80 or do you jump on a 150? So that for me is, is floggery of the highest order. And then the other person, <laughs> and a lot of people out here will agree with me because after Witsy went down, what did a lot of people do, Mitch? Oh, they they would they put the C on the guy that he's going up against or was going to be going up against yep. in... Uh, 
And then what did our, Ross Lyon do, Mitch? He went, fuck your fantasy teams. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to rest him for next week when he goes up against another ruckless team. So um, I saw this meme of uh, it's like Ross Lyon smiling and it's like what, when your opponent has the C on Marshall but you're his <laughs> like, coach in yeah, real life. I saw that. It's like, <laughs> that's good, eh? I was like, hold on. No, 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 no. Yeah, that's not happening. <laughs> Sub. <laughs> yeah, Rowan Marshall subbed off at three-quarter time. So Ross Lyon, flog. Yeah, no, no, can't be having that, Ross. Yeah. You're, you're in the bad books with fantasy <laughs> coaches. That's just not on. What about Sydney and Port, mate? Uh, Sydney and Port, a lot of debacle going on with the end of this game, but I do want to give a shout-out to a Chad Warner, who, again, is another guy who's been dropping in price. Um, he had a decent game, still only scored the 109, so other than a than a player like a Noah Anderson, didn't uh, go as high as his break even, so still might fall a little bit in price, but that kind of a... Uh, a score is a nice little sweet spot that will keep him a little bit under the radar okay. for those that maybe are looking at a cheaper upgrade this this yeah. week, but could give us some decent scores. You definitely got forward. your fantasy so hat on there. Very nice. Chad Warner, best on ground. Now, my flog here, I want to preface this by saying I'm a bloke who knows about going early, but <laughs> I don't think that I've seen anything like what this I was, saw this was hilarious. Saturday night. Yeah. Oli Florent, I'm sorry, yeah. but... He had the finger guns yeah. out. He Callum had- Mills. I want to. I want to put Callum Mills under the bus here because he also celebrated early under the goal square on the goal line. Callum Mills almost got to the fifty before yeah, the, before the used- ball got to the goal line. Yeah. So I mean, Ol- Ollie Florin, uh, you know, arguably was the best player on the ground as well. Yeah, he but, game, he, but he went early, and like I said, I'm no stranger. But it's it's pretty floggish, I think. Sorry, Ollie. Um, yeah. That's that's not going to cut it. Yeah, that's not going to do it. Uh, the next game, Essendon and GWS. It pains. Pains me, but I've put Finn Callahan here as the uh, best on ground who some people might have been forced to hold. I was recommending trading him out all week, and I did so myself. I walked the walk, but he, uh, for those who did manage to hold him, uh, he's pumped out a great score and 88, gone 88 <clears throat> on yeah. that game, his best score of the season so far, and he's going to keep his cash gen pumping yeah, and going up nicely, so... Very quickly, flog from that game. I thought Cogs underperformed, especially those people that have got him. He's, he has he's, been disappointing. He's not really a point of difference, is he? What's his ownership percentage? I think he's up there at like 30%, okay, I want to so say. Okay, so it's not but really me... a point of difference for those people that did own him. But if you've got if you've got Cogs and he's getting that midfield role, you want him scoring more than what he did. So uh, for me, 40% owned Cogs for that one. Which actually surprised me that it's yeah, that high. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, averaging 93, you've paid 98, expecting him to be undervalued, yeah. and he's gone under that. So yes, disappointing so far for Cogs. Tell me about my boy. Now, you actually put this one in for yourself here. And I, I was going to go here, but unfortunately, <laughs> the wits move stopped me from doing that. But best on ground, Jaden Hunt, who we will talk about a little bit later and whether or not yeah. it's too late for him. But 95 on debut for the uh, the Ox Lions. Yeah. Kicked a goal, 20 disposals, 7 marks. Also got 3 tackles. Just a... Uh, a great pickup as a mid-price target who we were pretty keen on yeah. as a guy f- to solve that constable issue without going all the way up to the top. So and, uh, uh, outscored some of the popular options like a Stewart yeah, who well, a I, lot of people did go. That's what I was going to talk about. I did, as much as my score sort of didn't reflect it, I had a reasonably kissed week in the fact that Wits went out. I was forced to go to English. He scored the 145. 145 and yeah. then because I still wanted to pocket some cash for this week, instead of going to Stewart like I was going to, I actually ended up going to Hunt who outscored Stewart, and now I've pocketed, I think I've now got you like got 400k, 400K in yeah, so. the bank. So I've been a little bit kissed this weekend with some late moves, but um, Jaden Hunt, we were definitely, well, I was definitely riding him all the yeah, way. Yeah, so. yeah, you were cheering hard, and he uh, he definitely uh, repaid the faith. And I think he actually, he could have gone even bigger. I think he had 65 in the first half, so yeah, yeah 30 points second half, could have been even bigger. So yeah. we'll talk about whether or not he's still an option. Uh, Flog, who's Flog your from guy this game. Here? Clayton Oliver, stop being... So good and not so in my greedy. Team. Oh, man, like, I just hate that greedy we, behavior. Yeah, hey. we don't like greedy behavior. It's I mean, just, unless it's on our team. But. Yeah, yeah. When I trade him in, like you do as you please, but that kind of stuff when you're not playing for the ox shorts. Ten tackles, just don't need a, it, yeah, mate. Like, what no are you good. doing? Um, yeah, still obviously the number one player in A4 fantasy. And uh, if you have him on your side, maybe you'd think differently to us. But last game of the round, the game that has just wrapped up at the time of recording, best on ground, Will Fucking Day, Again. as he will forever be known on? for us by now, is. <laughs> Uh, you know, 99, an absolute pummeling. Um, still just looks really good out there. I think he was a bright spot and otherwise pretty poor day for the Hawks, especially that second yeah. half. But just looks like a gun out there. And Might uh, not be a bog if he um, misses a week. Yeah, well, we'll talk about that in the uh, yeah, news of we the will. week. But 
Uh, a couple of flogs from this game. I think you, you um, put these guys in for me just really late. But Sicily, I think it, 32 points in the first quarter, I think, if you can confirm that for me. and then Yeah, let me double check that. And then... Um, 49 for the game. Yeah. F- yeah. I, I 31 mean, for the first quarter, yeah. And what, only, what, 18 after that for I the think, rest of the game. As you so eloquently put it before, he must have been standing around... What was he doing? You want to say, <laughs> well, you want to say it again? again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not saying it either. Yeah, but, um, but also from that game, Jeremy Cameron, this is like two or three minutes left to go in the game. He's off on the off on an absolute tear after he's kicked a goal and he's cleaned up the umpire, but the floggish behaviour is not cleaning up the umpire. It was the it's slow the, waltz dance <laughs> afterwards. <laughs> It's the weird way he picked him up. He's cradled him like a newborn. He's squatting over the top of yeah, him. He's poor looking umpire. him in the eyes. Like poor umpire. Oh, man, it was weird, eh? This poor up is thinking, I've just been cleaned up and now I'm being bloody, I don't know. Does he get a week for that? Like What, for the weird for the weird pickup? <laughs> tackling the, cut- the umpire. Oh, I should think he should get a week for the weird cuddle. <laughs> yeah, just for the sheer awkwardness of it. Yeah, it but, was. Uh, and I, I thought at one point he was going to kind of like lean in for a kiss or something. I don't, there was, was definitely a moment. There was, there was <laughs> yeah. a pause. Yeah, glint in his eye. But yeah, sorry, um, Jeremy Cameron, you can't go running over umpires. Uh, well, that will do it for our bogs and flogs there, guys. Let us know if you have any personal bogs and flogs for the round as it was. And just to sign off, we'll go with the auto grab one more time. And the winner of the Norm Smith medal. You're an embarrassment to what you do, mate. You're an embarrassment. Yeah, a few embarrassments there. All right, what <laughs> are we moving on to next, Luke? We got some news from the weekend, mate. We got some news for the weekend. I think I had a, a stinger for that last time, but I actually don't know where it's gone. I'm looking oh, on the screen. I, don't, yeah, I think you might have... Maybe you deleted it when you were doing your basketball surely stuff. Surely not. Oh, uh, okay. My bad. Unfortunately. It, it wasn't that good. So <laughs> how about we just talk about news for the week? <laughs> okay, news for the week. I was cutting over to you for the sound grab. It's not there. Yeah, my apologies. All, how about... All good. How about Witsy as the laid out? I think yeah, that... Yeah, so that was the big one. Um, it was obviously, big one for us. super, super late. I think... Look, well, first of all, shout out to Mitch Cleary because oh, the reporting was right on the border when the Bulldogs game was about to start. Yep. And obviously, Tim English was the guy that we both I managed to trade into. Us, um, some people maybe weren't so fortunate and quick to react, but where we where I got stung, well, we both got stung by the LDU news the week yep. before. Yep. Unfor- uh, fortunately for us, we were on top of this one. Uh, so, yep. look... It's unfortunate. I think he was out with soreness, which it's again, Witsy, captain of the club, pretty pretty soft effort, mate. Come on. <laughs> like, you rock, up, the rock up. Rock up and uh, play the game. But I yeah. think he's probably back next week. So for those of you who jumped on a Ned Moyle, who might have been your cover, who yeah. pumped out a 70, I think. Um, you probably have it to. It might be a one week wonder. Yeah, and if he's back this week, you, you can't go trading him this week. You, you have Wits. to. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah. if he's you, back, you keep him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, we were pretty kissed, I'll say, at the end there. Um, but, but yeah. I mean, that's big news, not only from our perspective, but, sorry, I can't even talk, but from those people that, that ended up then going Marshall for the C, it kind of changed the yeah. round in that way as well. It did, it did. Um, so. The other option that hopefully some people went to was maybe a Grundy later in the week, who yeah. was the number one ball boys big boy who did uh, pump out 119. So yep. that was a nice score. And he does have a few good matchups coming up as well uh, with Essendon next week, Richmond, who don't have a Ruckman anymore, yeah, uh, the week after. And I think also North Melbourne, who are rocking with a 40-year-old uh, Todd Goldstein. So it's got a decent run coming up. So if you did go that way, I think that um, you know, it's positive. the glass half full is you might have a good uh, Ruckman for a few weeks. We also had uh, Sheed out, which I think... Um was that it? was named up on teams. Yeah, yep. yeah, and it was. I think it affirmed what most people it was were a probably. Blessing in disguise, I think. It was what people were mostly doing, yeah. wasn't it? So I think it just kind of was like validated Put it at the front of the priorities. Yeah, so people most uh, mostly, I think, were, were trading him out anyway. But um, he was out, and then uh, we talk about obviously news from the week as well. But Marshall being that sub at three quarter time, I yeah. think. Like I said, I wasn't around to to watch that game, but my understanding is that it was just a, a pure management thing, and it's he's this, all good to go. Is this something? that we should expect in the future because Sydney also did it a few weeks ago as well with Peter Laddams when they were smoking uh, Gold Coast. I think it might have been round one or something like that. So you think but ruck management is a, is a ruck topic? Ruck management when teams are destroying, uh, especially those teams that don't really have a backup ruckman. So, you know, like, yeah. you know, St. Kilda doesn't really have a backup option. Sydney with um, Laddams, you know, being the only healthy ruckman there mm. with um, Hickey being out at the yeah. time. Um, they don't really have an option. Like, is this... Something that thing? we need to worry about. Like, if Bulldogs come out and dominate, like, like 
Surely they're not like yeah, at risk of subbing English out just to manage him. Look, I don't think so. And it doesn't it doesn't seem to me to be something that could consistently happen just because every team, and as the season goes on, this gets worse, but every team has that player that's just managing a little niggle or mm. they have or they do have an injury within the game. So I just, I just feel like it's... Not that there's anything really we can do in terms of game planning for it. Exactly. Like it's just if one of those things that's just that's unlucky. It. If you, you start to plan it. for that, I think then you... You overthink you, it. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, if for those people who did put the C on Marshall, like, let's be thankful, he did have 107, he got 107 at, at that so, point. Yeah. And, you know, if it you could have been huge. Out, it could have been, it it been, been big. But yeah. look, at least it wasn't a uh, Doherty 74, so... Uh, one more bit of news from the weekend that we want to mention is that the yo-yo played. He was so relevant for everyone before the season started. What what did you make of that? I think he had a 40-odd. Yeah, and... played a much more lockdown defensive role, yep. um, obviously easing back into the season. Scored 48, so he's, he's going to get cheaper. Um, but it's, it's... It's not someone that we can jump on until we see the role change, and probably we see it for a week or two. Yeah, I think um, so too. And yeah. and the role I would say is unlikely to have a drastic change just because of what West Coast is dealing with in terms of the injuries at the moment. Yeah, well, so who who is he covering for McGovern? Who's out? What eight to twelve weeks yeah, or something? They're like not that. really a like for a like, but yeah, he's probably having to play more accountable because yeah. the flow on effect of that. There's a lot of guys injury. out there, so yeah. Um, yeah. Look, I think he's someone that's just because of the timing of when he's come back and the nature of his. Injury history, you know, you'd want to see a fair bit of evidence to suggest that he's a good option before you jump on. Even if he, like, comes out next week and has a big one, I'd still probably wait another week uh, just to reaffirm and confirm that that's legit Yeah. Um, just because of the risk associated with him. It feels like a bit of a wasted kind of player, doesn't it, this... this yeah, it does feel a little bit. Obviously, we were all very high on him, and, and for good reason, I think, at the start of the season, but um, I don't think you can trust it midway through the season as it stands right now. Real quickly, before we move on to the next segment, yeah, yeah. what about the game that just finished up and Will Day? Is he... Yes. Uh, had a, a sling tackle. They called it a dangerous tackle on the at the time, so got yeah. the free kick for it. Is he someone that you think might be in trouble for the MRO and misses a game next week? The thing that the thing that worries me is just that the AFL has just made a tough stance, and rightly so. It's we, a very I hot mean, topic. We advocated for it the other the other week when Brody did what he did. So, it, I think there was one early in the game that you didn't catch with with Gary Rowan, yes. where there was apparently that was worse, wasn't it? I would say it was a bit. Yeah, it's a bit more kind of the double action whipping. Yep. I guess it's probably not the right, right way to describe it, but he felt like he, he whipped him more down, whereas Days didn't feel as much like two motions, but. Um, like I wouldn't be shocked if the AFL come out and said, "Hey, have a week, will day," because we're just we're absolutely against anything where the player's head is in jeopardy. If I if I put my MRO hat on, I think. <laughs> what does your MRO hat look like? Uh, don't know fedora or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> fedora. <laughs> uh, I wonder if that's what they wear at the MRO. Fedora. <laughs> something Was that lame. the first thing that came yeah, to mind? Something lame or something like that. Sombrero. That'd yeah. be a fun little. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine they're all sitting You've in court. You've been suspended. <laughs> Is that? That was it. They've got maracas. What are those? Yeah, maracas. Okay. So anyway, so at least we've established what the MRO look like. Yeah. So they're wearing their they're wearing their sombreros in there. Put your hat back on. Yeah. And. <laughs> but I three think, weeks. <laughs> I, think, I think the guy wasn't concussed, right? So the but the, we the don't imp- want the. But we know that they do it based on the impact. They're and, moving and the away. Result. They're moving away from that. They're moving away, but they're still stupid with that. But um, I think it wasn't. I wouldn't consider it intentional. There wasn't a two action sort of thing. Yeah, it was uh, maybe like low impact. So I think it's a fine. I, I, I think of all the things that I've seen so far, this is the lowest grading of all of them. And so I'm fingers crossed that it's a fine and that it wasn't intentional. It was high contact, yeah. but it was low impact um, and maybe just careless, I think is the, the wording that they use. So careless, low impact, high, I think results in a fine. It's the way that I would read it. Yep. Here's hoping because otherwise and, uh, there's some questions, isn't there? There is some questions because we're getting close to upgrade season exactly. and it's the kind of point <clears throat> of the season where maybe if they're missing one week, you maybe want to hold a player like that, yeah. especially like a Will Day, who's a little bit below what he's producing at, at the moment. Yep. Um, and obviously he's been a good pick. And if you can get an upgrade on the other side, but the fact that he, again, he's in the defensive line, you might not have yeah. much to cover him if he does miss. So stay tuned for that one, but I'm cautiously optimistic that it is a fine and not a suspension. Given that we probably won't record again until Friday, yes, is it worth not? discussing what 
we would what we would hypothetically do if day was out and just in terms of a hold or not i know uh, Hawth- yeah. hawthorne don't play until later but you know doherty plays thursday night if people were looking to make an upgrade or something like that my, oh, my, you wouldn't be going to doherty i don't think that would be too high i think my you'd, personal you'd, stance sorry go all i was gonna say is my personal stance anyway is now that it, it's probably the time where people are going to be making upgrades if you trade day and you see day as being a keeper top six defender and you trade him Mm. And you miss a week of upgrades, you're a week behind everyone else. Do I you agree. See it's, it? it's it's a tough one because it is that awkward week because some people might be making upgrades if you've got a bit of cash in the bank. Some yep. people might find it tough. If you can make an upgrade and still trade a will day, like say for example, like you've got four hundred k in your bank, yep. you might still be able to do that. I would advocate if he's out a week trading him and still making another upgrade, even if it's maybe not the guy that you wanted. Yep. So say you've got your eyes on someone a bit more expensive, you might have to settle for an upgrade that's a bit. You know, uh, cheaper. So maybe I could trade in Hayden Young or something like that. Trade in Hayden Young. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. Um, but I think that no, would we, be okay. We, if we want everyone else to trade in Hayden Young. Oh, Mitch. yeah, get on board. He's looking great. Yeah, the I hair looks so lovely. He's a, he's a fallen premium. Get he on. He scored 118, did you know? <laughs> Round <Yeah>. one. <laughs> what did he, he score for the rest of them? Uh, we won't discuss that. Um, but I think Will Day is someone that if you can't get an upgrade and trade a Will Day, you hold him and try and upgrade somewhere else. You do have the option to loop someone like a Lockie Cow and just fingers crossed that he gets somewhere close to like a 50 or something like that. You might get two shots at between him and another rookie on your bench. Uh, with Chester being the uh, zero there that you can uh, loop that score on for. But... Um, I think, yeah, if, you, if it's the difference between you making an upgrade and not, I think that it's okay to hold for a week in that instance. All right, good call, good call. Should we move on to this exciting segment? Let's do it. Now, just for context, Mitch just begged me. He said, I want my own segment. I want you to create a cool graphic where my head's on a karate chopping guy. And I said, Mitch, Those I can do. Words. And we came up with the chopping block with <laughs> Kung Fu Casey. <laughs> so, Kung Fu Casey, pull on your headband. and Warpool. Ca- <laughs> Warple, you jumped the, the gun. I was, I was building you to that. You just Warple, <laughs> he's gone. Get him out of my side. I never wanted him, and now he's somehow in my team. Oh man, get out of here, mate. We so we were watching the Hawthorne um, Geelong game this afternoon, and to start the game, Mitch is going, "Go Warps, go Warps." Just giving him trying a bit to of, be positive. Yeah, a bit of a nickname, like I'm your friend, Warps. Go get the ball, Warps. And then about I reckon ten minutes in, fuck you, Warple. This is shit. Warple's <laughs> crap. Warple's rubbish. Look, to be fair, he actually he actually finished on seventy one, which is not the worst score in the world. Uh, that's con- considering Callahan, who was your other option, went eighty eight. So. Yes, that was more the frustrating things that I could have saved a hundred thousand and got another eighteen points. <laughs> and uh, I just look, I, I'm forever worried. I was worried that he was going to get subbed off at yeah. one point. Like they had uh, Wingard on the bench there uh, as the sub, but yeah. Warple to me, his role is declining. I've seen enough. He's not good. Um, so I think that he is someone that you can trade out, get up to a premium at this time. It's um, it's a very decent upgrade to get him up to a premium, get a, a rookie down, uh, and I think that that's a good trade to make. So uh, James Warple is on the chopping block for me. Uh, who else um, are you karate chopping? I still have Finn Callahan on the chopping block. Now, I know he scored well. Yep. He scored at 88, but I still think that if he is maybe the guy that gets you to the guy that you want... You know, maybe a rookie is not quite fattened enough that you can get him up to the guy that you want. Yep. If a Callahan is, because he's a little bit, a little bit more expensive, despite scoring 88 on the weekend, I think that he is still someone that I'd be happy to cut and pull the trigger on. So his break even, I'm thinking it will now be at 36 based on that 88. Yes. You're still chopping him if, if you can get there. This is the point of the season where I think you've got to be ruthless and let the upgrade dictate. The, the guy who is moving on. So You've ripped that from someone. I've heard yeah, that. Yeah, I have. I think, that's a, I think that's a Selby, uh, Selby, Selby lesson it, yeah. and learning. So, um, <laughs> look, the role isn't there. He's not an inside mid. He's yeah. playing outside. He had a very friendly matchup. The ball was pinging around. It was a very outside game against Essendon on the weekend. Yeah. So, I think that favoured him. He was he was going to his wing a lot of the time. He just kind of popped up. Um, and the, the games before that, that wasn't there. So, he could just as well be scoring like... 40s and 50s next week. So if you can get him up to a premium, a guy that's going to be in your team until the end of the buys, I think that you do that. A um, couple of rookies that I think it's okay for us to move on from, whether it be going down or going up. Um, Wilmot, 
Lockie Cowan. I would even tick off someone like a, a Hollands if that's someone that gets you up to the guy that you want to get to. Yep. Um, even though he had another good score on the weekend, probably I think is his best for the uh, round. Philippousis is someone that I think you can uh, chop at this stage. So can I ask you a question? When it when it comes to those those rookies, are you essentially scanning the rookies that you've got in your team <clears throat> and you're looking for the one that you think is least likely to reach their break even and, and that's your primary trade bait? Is that Would that be a, an oversimplification? It's a very good question. Um, I think, again... You want to let the upgrade dictate the guy that's getting chopped. So, for example, like a Lucky Cowan is 200 and whatever, 80K at the moment. Yeah. So, he doesn't have that much money on his head. And so, whilst you might want to get rid of him and his break even is probably closest to his average, someone like an Elijah Hollands who's doing a lot better has you know an extra hundred thousand dollars on his head. So, he might be able to get you closer to the better upgrade at the end of the day. And the aim of the the aim of the game is to get the best premiums in the quickest. Yep. So the quicker you get into the premium that you want to get to, the more opportunity that premium has to put on points and get you up the ranking. So, um, for example, last year I can't remember who the rookie was, but I culled a rookie early to get in a Callum Mills in round six, and um, you know never looked back. I think it was yeah. like a who was the Adelaide guy. Um, Oh, not Rich. You didn't have Rochelle. Rochelle, yeah, it, it was, was Rochelle. He, I he you was didn't a, have I did. I traded him in and then traded him back out. I think two <laughs> weeks later. So he was someone that everyone was trying to, you know, hold on to because he had a few good scores early. But yeah. at the end of the day, they're rookies. They're going to be up and down. We've even seen someone like a Ruben Jimby start to get fatigued and tired. He had a poorer score on the weekend. Yeah. There's nothing to say that like an Elijah Hollands, sorry, not Elijah Hollands, uh, Oliver Hollands, yeah. you know, starts to dip in production. Um, and if they are your ticket to get up to a premium that you like then I think that you pull the trigger. There is exceptions to that, obviously. You're not trading out a Harry Sheasel. No. He's a fucking premium. Like, he yeah. is not a rookie. Yeah, he is the third there. highest scoring player in the game. Um, I think you are still holding on to a Will Ashcroft. Um, I still think you are holding on to a Ruben Jimby, even though there is a bit of talk about him uh, potentially being managed just because his role is so nice. And prior to this game, he had been scoring exceptionally well, especially in that back line. Yeah, definitely. Um, and potentially a McKenzie, although I am more open to moving a McKenzie than those other three. So, um, But ideally, if, in the perfect world, if they're close to their break, even they're not making as much cash and it still gets you to the player you want, then those are the guys you want to move on first, if that makes sense. Perfect. Have you got anyone else that's getting chopped? or uh, I don't, but I think you've added someone sneakily onto this list here. No, I just put Hayden Young there because I <laughs> just wanted to talk about getting rid of him. I don't yeah. think it's going to happen. He's going to be no, like, we have to hold to the boys. We're but stuck with that, uh, that mug on our, on our fantasy I team. I think I'm going to stop watching him, mate. Yeah, I think, I think we've got to stop putting ourselves through those yeah, free games. Yeah, it makes me really angry. Okay, well, if we're done talking about who's getting le chop, should we have a bit of a chat about who's, on, uh, who's in our scope? Yes. Who's getting targeted? Let's do so. Let's do it with the ball, boys. Trade targets. We need to get maybe an audio stinger for these that. things too, because we've got all this fancy gear. Maybe on like you know, those Western, like the, the and then the you know, yeah, like the yeah, you know, the tumbleweeds come across or something. Like there's that. a lot of people. I'm assuming there's a few people that just listen on Spotify and don't think so. see what's happening. So yeah, I mean, you're missing out. You have got these beautiful faces you could look at, but on <laughs> YouTube, but it's probably <laughs> a, a smart decision for those people. <laughs> Your choice. Oh, okay. uh, but let's got? have a look at some. Uh, so it's upgrade season. It is. So. What are we talking about? Before I go into some specific names, yep. let's talk about the, the general principles. We're targeting underpriced premiums, okay? So just because you can go up to a more expensive, guys, doesn't always mean that you should. Let me put it this way. If you can say, say you can go into someone like a um, uh, Clayton Oliver this yep. week, you've just got the money, you've banked yep. 400K like you have, and you want to go out to the big dog because you're sick of him scoring all these points on your head. <laughs> Just because you can doesn't mean you should because when it comes to the next week and yep. we're looking to make our next upgrade, well, then your funds might be a little bit low and you, yep. might, be able to, you might be missing out on the guy that you wanted to go, go next week. So we're all about it's the race now. So right now it's the fastest player or the fastest person to complete their team yep. will be in the front of that race and that's how you're going to get your ranking up. So the way to do that is to get underpriced premiums. Yep. So players that are going to outscore what they're currently priced at and get them into your team as fast as possible. So we're looking for some of those premium guys who might have been really highly priced at the start of the year that have had potentially a slow start to the year that we can now jump on thinking about the fact that they're now going to um, 
you know, perform better than what they started the year at. So, yes. who is at the top of your list? So, I like to look at players who are potentially... Uh, the, the benchmark is around 10 points. You know, looking for okay. players that are close to 10 points under price. Yeah. The close you get to the top of their line, I think that that can maybe come in a little bit. Yeah. So, if you have a chance to get on say like a Doherty or someone like that, and he's maybe like five points under where you think he might go the rest of the season. I think that, that that's, a, that's an exception because you want him in your team at some point this season. So again, if we go on that theme, Tom Stewart, I know he had a poor score, scored a 70 this, uh, this round. We highlighted the fact that he might have been tagged, although I don't think he was tagged. The ball was never really down the no, Geelong think, end um, of the ground. So. Sam Mitchell was playing a little bit of um, funny buggies there. A little there bit, of, bit of cat and mouse yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, an interview before the game or something where he said that he might have been... Thinking of tagging him, yeah, but we don't like that. Go. Yeah, no, we certainly don't Sam like Mitchell, that. Sam Mitchell, come on, mate. <laughs> um, so I think he is still definitely an option. Price in the mid eighties, I think he can go mid nineties. So he is someone that yeah. is going to be close to that top so six. He's going to be priced mark. at eighty six, is my my estimate. Yeah, so he could cool. definitely be ten points unders, which yeah. ticks that box for me. Uh, Noah Anderson is someone that I'm also looking at. I was looking at him and thinking he might be a nice target for us. He did pump out that 150, so his price is now going to be up around that 8, 18, 820 mark, uh, which gives him a price that figure of 105. The question mark is where do you see him going? Prior to the season, I saw him going that 103, 104 mark, which again is close to that 9 to 10 points of upside. Um but with the poor first three rounds, has that changed our projections? What does this last score mean for him? Um, I guess that is the question for him. That's what I sort of was alluding to before as well, wasn't it? Is that it's, it's, it's an outlier, which is really frustrating in a lot of ways yeah. because there'll be people who go, 156, he's, he scored poorly, he's, he's at the bottom, and now we're just onwards and upwards. But when you get a 156 after three eighties, like, what do you think of that? Do you think that yeah. it's just a flash in the pan? Do you think that it's that it's the start of then him, you know, going on to be a one ten averaging player, one oh five averaging player? It's it's just really hard to tell. So do you think it's one that you have another look at if you can? I think I think yeah, it's tough because obviously his break even's kind of been reset and he, he might potentially get more expensive from here and then no longer be a value option. So and I don't think he's the kind of guy that is gonna absolutely put a ceiling on you week in, week out. Um, so I think that if you miss him, it's not the end of the world. Um, but I, I think I'd prefer to have another week's look. Yeah. Uh, it is unfortunate, the timing of his big game today. Um, the other guy that I was going to give uh, a shout out to was a uh, Sam Doherty. He's going to be coming down in price. So he's is that because he scored poorly on the weekend, Mitch? It is because he scored poorly. As my poorly. captain. He did. <laughs> yeah. I think the worst game of the season so far. Was it? Was it? Yeah. yeah. No, I, I pre- think, appreciate I so. you bringing that up. Thanks. Not by much. Thanks for um, that, big boys. But <laughs> sorry, mate. At least he wasn't number one. He was. He was down the list. Yeah. Um, break even should be high. So again, he could be someone that you could wait another week. It is still that awkward spot where these guys are still probably coming down in price. Yeah. But a guy like Sam Doherty could come out and score a big ceiling score and reach his break even 129. So yeah. um, it is okay that if you are within striking distance, a player like that, I would put the uh, the tick on. The other guy I want to talk about is, well, two big dog mids. And if you can get to these guys, I don't necessarily have it. We talk about not going all the way to the top, but if you can get to a Rory Laird yeah. or a Tuke Miller... I think that those are two guys that I would be very interested in. I really also want to highlight, especially Tuke Miller's run moving forward, because I think these Suns have a good uh, run of fixture. And I think that Tuke Miller, with the hamstring issues that hampered him in the start of the season, um, went up to a little bit of a slow start, but is ready to go bang soon. He's got Frio... North Melbourne, Richmond, uh, the next three weeks. He comes up against Melbourne, which is a tougher game, but then against the Eagles, um, Lions, and the Bulldogs, who are yep. also giving up a lot of points. So the run-up to his round 13 bye, which is very unique for him as well, I think that he potentially could be a very good target. So based on uh, based on Laird and, and took scores on the weekend, um, are we they're, they're sort of priced at 108, 109. Yeah. Uh, does that mean that you're seeing that 10 points of upside that you talked about before? Yeah, so it, it's not quite the, the sweet spot that you would like to, but with players like that, especially because not many other people will be around that 10 points of upside at this stage, um, they have the ceiling that they potentially could go. Yeah. Like there is a realm of possibility that Rory Laird does go 120 from here or Took Miller does go 120 from here. They've done it in the past. So... These are like your uber premiums. 
that the ceiling is there, if the run is also there, um, Tuukka Miller also has the advantage of that unique buy round as well. I think it's okay that if you can get up to them, I would be much more likely to pay for them than I would for a Clayton Oliver, for example, who is still over a million dollars. Sorry, I'm just checking my phone. I got some beers being delivered to it. Oh, okay, we've got so service over here. Should see it, just a hand just pop out a shot <laughs> and just pass a few beers. Hopefully, we'll see. Doing on your phone we'll see, see if Ellie's going to tell me to fuck off or not. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, those are my targets this week. I think there's a couple of guys that we're maybe watching for a couple of weeks' time. Lockie Whitfield is a guy that I wanted to highlight yeah. as someone who potentially could, well, I think definitely will get defender status. And while a lot of people are looking at Tom Stewart as a guy who might be underpriced, Lockie Whitfield is also someone that I think might be so being think, forgotten. Well, do you think Whitfield could be a play potentially this week and then you wait one week, he gets defender status, you swing him and, sh- and sheasel back and then you start looking at how you build the rest of your midfield? Is that kind of yeah, how you would play the, that? Or? The tough thing about Whitfield is that obviously right now we've got a shortage of good rookie options in defense. <coughs> so yep. we're trying to get those defenders in now to get rookies off the ground. Yep. And so that's why Tom Stewart was a very popular player this week because it allowed you to you know, get a Wilmot or a Cowan off your field potentially. Whereas Whitfield, you're not going to be able to do that for at least one more round and if day um, if day does so that, get done this week it probably yeah. exacerbates that even more doesn't it so that's the downside and the risk of a lucky Whitfield he scored a hundred on the weekend so he's still going to go down in price his break even or was um, higher than that so he's still going to be there but he's he's in the low 700s now oh, so price here come at, the beers Oh, Thank here you. we go. Thank you very much. Look at this service. Too kind. And and she's, she's happy face. about it too. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Ellie. Coming through. <laughs> um, um, and then, so I think he's, you know, price, low 80s. He's someone that could average 100 for us. Drinking stonies. Um, and uh, yeah, so I think as an alternative to Stuart, say you already traded in Stuart, yep. for example, this yeah, week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're looking for another underpriced guy, I think that Lockie Whitfield could definitely be there. Yeah, if that's the case, there could be some d- defen- defences that are um, yeah, we kind could of be come and come. finishing our defences in forward lines yeah. pretty, um, pretty fast. Well, pe- there. People who have Sheasel and Zebel mm. anticipating that both of them could move up as well. So interesting times. Who else are we uh, targeting as underpriced primos? Do I you still think? like I still like Josh Kelly. I still think he's underpriced. Yeah, um, he was a guy that I was targeting this week. Won't go up a whole bunch. He might just. Just tick over the 900k, yep. but I think that he is a guy that could definitely be top four in the midfield. Um, so I think he is someone that you can look at. And then Caleb Sarong is also someone. Yep. It's it's getting to the point where maybe it is a bit late and there might be other better options. Um, uh, Chad Warner is another guy that we mentioned earlier before. Yep. Yep. Assuming he's not going to get tagged moving forward. He's got Richmond this weekend coming, so you're not going to get a tag there, so you should be able to run free. Geelong after that, who don't normally tag. Giants, who are no longer taggers anymore. So he's got a decent run coming up in Collingwood after that. So all non-taggers, so yep. a player like Chad Warner could go well and is of that cheaper price tag. So Now, I, I, anticipate, I anticipate that you are certainly not going anywhere near it, but I think he actually went all right this afternoon. And Mitch Duncan, do you think he could be perhaps a person that uh, a few people try and so get around? What did, what did he end up on? Um, so what's get me, that up close? Um, I think he went like 130 or something like yeah, that. Yeah, so he's had a massive game. He's had 127. Yeah. He's, he's defender only. So he's priced at 93. There'll be people who, be, who are tempted by that big score. I can't see him going over 100 personally, so... Um, I know I, it's a no from you, but what would be your sort of talk? You know, if you're talking to somebody who's advocating for him, what's why? Why is it? A well, no? what did Stewart have last week? 126. Yeah. Well, what did he have this week? So you just think that there's natural fluctuation in? Those I think Geelong there's natural defenders. fluctuation between just those Geelong defenders. Okay. I think um, Stewart's the guy that we saw both of them play the role that they're currently playing right now last year. Yeah. Stewart was the better player and the player that had the more consistently high ceiling. Duncan have obviously a great game this game, but I don't necessarily trust it to repeat itself consistently enough that he's going to be presenting value when he's probably going to be priced at around that 95 mark. Um, so for me, if you're getting a guy at that point, you want him to go 100 plus, and I just don't see Mitch Duncan at his age uh, doing that this season. Uh, beautiful. Well, that wraps up our ball boys trade targets. All I right. think it's time for some questions, and you've uh, you've been fielding questions over on yeah, Twitter. Is that right? Some questions. Send out some Let's feelers. have a look as I bring this one up. What do you First got one, me? I'm going to throw it over to you, Luke. Um, how do we make it stop hurting? Uh, <laughs> is the first you question. need to go and see a doctor. Is the <laughs> is the answer to that? No, it won't stop hurting. Even I I'd have to imagine even if you're highly ranked, it, every little 
bump in the road hurts. I'll tell you way. what, when I was inside the top 100, you know, Captain Callum Mills, it hurt a lot last year. So, <laughs> so maybe it even hurts worse when you're not doing shit. I don't know. But okay, well, so here, here you go. Here's how you make it stop hurting. Just Who said that? Who said how do you stop hurting? Uh, Simon Stacks over here. Um, Good on you, Simon. Simon, the way you make it stop hurting is you just make the correct decision every single round for the rest of the season. <laughs> it's and, as uh, simple as that. Yeah, just play a perfect game from here. You I definitely think, don't um, start young instead of day yeah. That's certainly what you don't I wouldn't do. recommend that. <laughs> I wouldn't recommend captaining Doc- Dockley last week, even though I did recommend that. <laughs> um, yeah, it won't just, stop hurting. It just sucks. get every decision right uh, from Man. here and you'll have a great time. It's an addiction, but hey, it hurts us and we just come, we come yeah, back. Yeah, we're sickos, aren't we? Um, <laughs> okay, we got to... Okay, edit. thoughts on Jaden Hunt as a defender option. Now, obviously, you went yeah. there last week. I was very excited to go there this week, but obviously, I couldn't do it with the wits news. Look, what I what I'd say to that is, it, I originally wasn't going to go there. I was kind of forced to go there to, to pocket some cash after the the English trade. He's is going it, to go up sixty two thousand dollars after this round. Yeah, His break I, even will still be very low, under ten. I don't think he's going ninety fives. So, I, yeah, he's going to be priced at sixty one. I think that I. Have him pegged at around a 70 yeah. is what I sort of thought. 70 to 75 is what I had him pegged at. I know I was chatting to Holmesy when I was thinking about going on he you said, know, the Jade Hunt. No. He said, as an owner, it's a nervous watch. Yeah. Um, I still like the pick and I was going to go through with it if it wasn't for wits. But that was when he was priced at the mid-50s. So I still saw about 15 points of upside. Now I think there's probably 10 at best. Um, so I think you're probably better off at this stage now shooting a little bit higher because you can get a Tom Stewart who is now 10 points under price and is potentially a keeper. A keeper as well. And yeah. and the thing we saw on the weekend is as good as the 95 looks there, it was a 65 first half and it was a, a what's that, 30, 30. second yeah. half. So let's say he goes 30 in both halves, then are yeah. you really probably looking at it? You're probably not and, you, yeah. and I probably feel shit. So And he was up against his old club, like maybe there was a bit of extra motivation he kicked, he kicked going on, kicked a goal to get to that the, score. Yeah, um, so I think I think it's probably a no, but I'm sure there's a situation out there where it lends itself to making if you, that move. If you got him, it's been a great trade. It's been a good pick so far yeah. and it's it's one that's worked, but I think for those who are looking to jump on now, I would suggest that you've missed the boat and I would be trying to look elsewhere and trying to get the next guy. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, so he might put a few decent scores out, but it is going to be a guy that you're going to have to trade again later. Mm. And I think at this stage, I wouldn't be trying to get those guys into your side. Last week was kind of like the week to do it. Yeah. Now I think it's a bit late, in my opinion. Yeah. Give me another question. What do you got over there? Another question. Um, uh, uh, will Day, will he be spending? I think we have to go. Uh, well, I'll throw this one to you. Does Hayden Young have to go? Well, he does. But no, when I say that, I mean like, Every fiber in my being tells me <laughs> Hayden Young needs to go in the bin. But can if this is what I this is what I'd say is flinching. If you yes. trade Hayden Young this week, this is my definition You're of flinching. Consolidating the loss exactly because it, even though he may not go on and be the ninety five plus averaging guy that we would hope, if you flinch this week, you sacrifice the ability to just keep your keep your team ticking over. And like you said, from this point on, it's a race. Yep. Some of us are a bit further behind in the race, but trading Hayden Young, I think, would just be just consolidating your, your spot as, you know, a, a shit spot in the race. Yes. Is kind of what I'm trying to say. Yep. So as much as every bit of me wants to trade him, I'm I'm fighting against myself a little bit. So what do we th- expect him to go? I think worst case, so he put up an 88 season last year. Yeah. I think worst case, he's like an 85, maybe maybe low 80s yeah. at worst case if uh, Frio have changed their game style. Yeah, and um, it all it, that that hurts so much right now when you've got Dacos putting up one twenty every week. But look, as, it sucks. Like if we were to do our time over again, we would have picked Dacos. Like obviously, exactly. But um, at, as the course of the season goes on, those averages just start to come closer to each other. At the moment, we got one twenty, and they just start to come closer. And suddenly, Dacos is uh, sorry, uh, Young's eighty five doesn't look you know quite as bad next to other people who whose yeah. averages aren't now 125 and, and it's the opportunity cost it's like okay yeah you could get you could do a will day uh, sorry um uh a Hayden Young and trade him up to or, or trade into a, a steward or trade him up to a day or something like that and that maybe gives you a net positive in points but yeah. what could you have done with that trade you could have maybe got a warple up to someone like a Josh Kelly yeah. uh, for example and yeah. that's like a 40 point increase yeah. it's those other trades that I think for most teams will net you more points in the long run yep. um, than a trade like that. So yeah, that's my thoughts uh, yeah. on it. As much as it sucks, 
Uh, question for you as well. Again, oh. this one you'll have a good insight in. Who Cute. is Richmond's number one ruck likely <laughs> to be with Nank and Soldo both out for well, I think a little bit of time? The question has an angle, doesn't it? I think people out there are starting to angle towards, okay, well, Samson Ryan's priced at 250 yes. is it? Something like that. Let me have a look. Samson. Yeah. So people are thinking, okay, well, can I bring Samson Ryan in? He's DPP as well, I believe. So he scored 32 on the round. His breaking was 21. So he's probably going to be around that 240. Yeah. So mark I, think, this round. I think that those two guys being out, I think it guarantees that Samson Ryan's playing each week now. I would it, agree. It maybe gives him more security in terms of being the sub as well. But Richmond can do some spicy stuff too. So my, my thinking is that... They if have been known in the past to go like ruckless. Well, let's... Yeah, let's say they play they play Samson Ryan in the ruck to start and the game's not going... How it, how it should be, suddenly you could see Noah Bolter in the ruck. Suddenly you could see I think Mar- Noah Marlon a Pickett you could suddenly see in the ruck, which would be a wild one. But it, it just, I don't have any confidence that Richmond are the kind of team that when their ruck goes out, they just go, okay, ruck's out, then we're bringing in this guy and we're just locked into that. I feel like Richmond could be the team that could throw a few spicy things at you. But, yeah. I mean... I think sometimes uh, uh, Ben Miller was the guy I was talking to you about before. Oh, ben okay. Miller's been a guy that sometimes goes in there and yeah. rucks a little bit as well. I actually have, as a Richmond fan, I've liked what he's done as a bit of a chop-out ruckman. I think the three guys you're going to see in there most likely are Ben Miller, Noah Bolter, and Samson, um, Samson Ryan. Yeah. I think probably in terms of like their importance to the team elsewhere... Samson Ryan is probably the most replaceable in what he does. Yeah, Bolter's playing well down Bolter's back. Bolter's doing well down back. So I yeah. think I personally predict that Samson Ryan might actually move into the number one ruck with a Ben Miller being the chop-out ruckman. But would you agree that that could just... Go it could change any, any second. Yeah. It could. It could. But I, it I do agree pick. with you in terms of the fact that it helps his job security. And at 240k, when we do have a lack of rookies coming through... This does allow him an avenue to job security and potential scoring. So as a downgrade target, I actually think that it is not the worst thing to jump he on Samson DPP, Ryan isn't now. He is DPP, he, he so is, you yeah, get him okay. as a forward. Okay. Um, he does give you that ruck coverage if we have a, a laid out wit yeah. situation. It's not the worst play in the world, hey? So I, I actually don't... Like where before I was anti-Samson yeah. Ryan because he's just horrible at fantasy footy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um as good looking as he is. Not in preseason <laughs> quarter four, mate. Yeah, that's, exactly. That's where right. he really Points shines. per minute. Um, I actually think now that it actually, this actually makes him a viable downgrade option if it gives you enough money to upgrade. So, yeah, definitely. Uh, to definitely answer your question there, I think that it's something that I, I don't, I would tick off. Um, thoughts on trading Sean Darcy for Tim English? This is, this is points chasing, in my opinion. Yeah, and it's the, the problem is, it's what we've just talked about before, isn't it? It's it, a bit of the Hayden Young story. Yeah, we're now at the point where it's a race to get your premiums, and, and just obviously Tim English has just been setting the world on fire, but on any given he week, Sean Darcy good. could pump out a 120 as well. Yeah. So it's going to probably hurt you for a few weeks where you, you're probably um, seeing a few less points with Darcy than English, but it's... Um, it's going to hurt you more later when you don't have a team full of premiums yeah. and everyone else does. Yeah, I think... Uh, and also, Sean Darcy's role looks a little bit better. He was the number one ruck, clearly, on the yeah. weekend as well. So, yeah. he's someone that has a ceiling. Um, you've obviously not spent as much as Tim English. Tim English has looked great. Don't get me wrong. He's yeah. going to be the number one ruckman as long as he stays healthy. Yeah. Um, but I think, again, it's the opportunity cost of going somewhere else instead. Agreed. Any more questions? Uh, we've got a couple more. So who do we get in the 600 to 700K price range? The, this position? guy has already got Will Day, Zeeble, and Setterfield. I don't, he hasn't labelled a position. Amazing. So let's have a look at this price tag. I think... What was it, 600 to 700K? 600 to 800 is the price tag that this gentleman has given us. I want to... What, what price is Chad Warner? Uh, Chad Warner, 762,000 is a uh, little smoky for me. I Noah think Anderson that, falls in that bracket too. Um, I think he might just get over 800. Oh, now that he's... Yeah, when round, it updates. Yeah. When it updates Obviously, yeah. we're recording this before the price changes has true, happened. True, 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 true. But I think Chad Warner is a guy in the midfield there that I think that you could potentially uh, tick off. Um, in the defence line, I still think Tom Stewart's an option. Um, 
Is there anyone in the forward line that you is? What about Cozzy Pickett? I'd go Braden Proust, to be honest. 758K. <laughs> Braden Proust. That's who I'd be bringing in. Yeah, all right. Just trying to sabotage everyone else out there. Correct. I need it. <laughs> <laughs> what about uh, what about a Cozzy Pickett? Who? Um... Yeah, Cozzy, I, Cozzy, I reckon I could get behind it. I liked what I saw on the weekend. Even though the score wasn't enormous, there was potential for the score to be enormous. And people will say... Yeah, well, what was it? 2-5 or something like that? Yeah, and people will say, well, you know, he's not going to play West Coast every week. And they're absolutely correct. He's not. Yes. But... Um, the the role looks solid. He his stat line was you know how we talk about a diversified stat line as well. Yeah, I thought it looked alright. It looked alright. So he had nine CBAs. So he was where was he? Did I read that right? Sorry, yeah, I think six, it was six it was CBAs. Like so he was behind. Look, James Jordan got more than him, and he only came on as a sub. Tom Sparrow was ahead, Petrarca, Viney, Oliver. So he's kind of, what, fifth in line there in but terms it, of the CBA. So he's, I don't know if you can trust much with the CBAs in a game like that, but like I, I, <laughs> I always found in a game like that, if I was an, a chance of getting any midfield time, I was like, no, 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 no midfield time. Pull me out front. I want to kick some <laughs> goals. Yeah, exactly. I want to kick some snags. I'll go forward and try and get to the end of a few. So maybe yeah. there's a bit to that as well. But Fair I, enough. I, I, I think, still don't. I'm, I'm not on a Cosy Pickett train. Lucky Whitfield's in that price range as well. Whitfield is a good shout, to especially go, if you have the ability range. to cover your defence for another week. Um, yeah. So there's a few all right options there. Are you are you on board with the Dugowie pick? I what did he score oh, on the weekend? Seventy seven. I'm I'm off to Goey. I, I know some people have it. suggested it, but I don't think I could go you, there. But you've got scars from last year, but not from your team. I think yeah. <laughs> I, I just don't think in that Collingwood system he's consistent enough to put up those big numbers. Yeah, it's fair um, enough. But he is an option in that price range for some people. I, so. I'd be going Chad Warner over him every day of the week. Personally, would you go Whitfield over Warner in, in this stage? But um, if let me put it this way, I think. Oh, that's a tough one, actually. I think I might just go Chad over okay. Whitfield. I think Chad just looks like he's going to score bigger, and I think with his run coming up, I like him a little bit better. Just the fact that the risk with Chad Warner is obviously he's like the impact player, he and teams will clamp run. down yeah, on him that's true. as that sort of number one tag target. It's true. When he's coming up in a good run of um, games where I don't think he will be tagged. I think that that... Puts uh, him at the top of the list there, but I think he and Tom Stewart to me are the two targets that I'd be looking for in that price range. Oh, that was a thorough answer for that question. Do we have any others that we want to get? Let's to? go. Maybe one more okay. um, thoughts on Rioli, Weller, Redmond, and Tim Kelly as options instead of Stewart. Any of those guys in there that you'd like? I feel a little bit bad on the on the Rioli front because for a few weeks he now people been have been asking us about him and we've kind of been oh no the Richmond scoring system he you know he's, yeah, 105 he's just, on the weekend well, his, his lowest score has been 89 this this year yeah and we sort of kept I guess saying no um, but I guess he's proven that he can maintain it I, I still wouldn't be going there he's averaging 100 points this season as so a defender far. as, as well, a defender so yeah. it, it's good um, I, I'm at the point now where if somebody was doing it I would say yep. That's all good, but am I going to do it myself? No. So I guess that's kind of where I'm sitting in terms of confidence. What's he priced at? What will he be priced at? Um, what do you go, 105? Ha- yeah, so have we missed the boat? Is so he's going to be priced at around that 780 mark, priced at 91. I can't see him doing 100. I think 95 is the best case scenario. And mm-hmm. I think in that instance, you have missed the boat. I'd rather Tom Stewart. Um and he yeah. hasn't popped a massive score either. You very rarely see Richmond players go 140, whereas Tom Stewart yeah. is a chance, I think, of doing something enormous on any given week. So. Although we have noticed that Richmond seem to be doing a little bit more of that chip mark kind of game style, a little bit more short kicks than they have in the past. I don't know if this has just been the way the games have gone or and, if it's like... losing, a, mate. So yeah, it hasn't worked for it, has it? For long. Um, but... I don't know. What about what about Tim Kelly? He's obviously gone huge on the weekend, scored 142, but he has had three games in a row where he scored a, a, a ton. Um, so hard to pick a guy it's in those, a team that's getting smashed that's as well the thing I was and, re- say. and rely on them being a big scorer week to week in a team that's not going to potentially just see much of the footy in general. And his role's not that different than it has been before. So I, I'd probably say no to that yeah. one. And my, my thinking would be don't, 
don't jump at those enormous scores week to week. You, or every week you can have a guy who comes out and does a 140, 150. Do you mm. jump on that every week? No, because otherwise you're just chasing. So, yeah, yeah, I don't think so. Not. I think if I was to talk to this person again, I'd go towards that Chad Warner sort of type of that. Again, these guys are all around that kind of price tag. And um, there's nothing wrong. Again, we don't want to get unique just for the sake of being unique at this stage just yet. Our yeah. teams will start to look a lot more different in the future. Tom Stewart, I think, is still going to be an option. A lot of people jump this week. We were of the opinion that maybe this week wasn't the week to do it, but I think now, from this week on, I'm happy to to pull the trigger and go for uh, Tom Stewart now. Yeah. No, I agree. I agree. Should we wrap that things up? Might do us for today. Oh, before um, before we go, we've um, forgotten the last couple of times to shout out the uh, AFL Fantasy Content Creators oh, Cup yeah. as well. How'd you so go? How'd you go? What, who, are you, who are you versing this Which week? is pretty standard. Matt, like, Matt get up. pressure point. I don't know. Did you get up in there? I think I might have got up. I think I was going Will Dave versus Sicily at the end and uh, yeah, that you got worked up. out very much in my no, favour. No, did actually. So you got up. You, you went all right. But so I think I'm two and two now. Yeah. If you flip the ladder... Around, I would be on the top. So <laughs> okay. that's how well I'm going. But um, no, in terms of in terms of that, um, Guesty's uh, organised that one and got all the sort of content creators together as well. And um, his uh, his company, Infinite Wealth, over in WA, there does a lot of um, great work in terms of like financial advice and stuff as well. Yes. So if uh, if you are looking for that kind of a thing, go and check them out, Infinite Wealth. I think he's got a bit of thing coming on for us that we might be able to get involved in in terms of a bit give- of financial advice. Yeah, we nice. might we might need it. <laughs> <laughs> well, especially yeah. my fantasy team to manage my, my fantasy finances, so I can. Get as we need we need that cash generation, so we'll go we'll go talk to Guesty. But no, I appreciate him doing that because yeah. as Legend. much as I'm um, stinking it up, I am, am enjoying being involved. So yeah, I've got Calvin at it next week. So oh, he. my first trader. You're in the targets, mate. <laughs> uh, Scoping him out. So yes, uh, and I think you've and got Mitch, one of the uh, the break even podcast boys coming up okay. so it doesn't matter who I'm playing I'm, I am think I'm going to lose oh, you're going big mate you got, the, you got the worn chest going you, you're ready to go hey, Calvinators should be scared you're unhinged mate with what you said before on the podcast I couldn't believe that where that came from Christ yeah we'll have to see if there's anything extra than an explicit day on this one. <laughs> yeah <laughs> But thank you guys again oh, for man. the 1,000 subscribers, which we haven't uh, mentioned on the podcast. So everyone who subscribed yes. to uh, begin this year, thank you very much for your support and everything that you guys have uh, helped us along the way in the podcast, whether it's been on Twitter and the comments section below. Let us know in the comments on YouTube how your round went. Let us know who's on the chopping block for you, who's <laughs> in your targets. And uh, we'll see you guys on Friday for the last ever uh, live show after a game on Thursday. So Ooh, Friday games now. Friday is the first game yeah this will be the last yes. week of the Thursday night games okay. and then we've got Friday night lockouts from then on out so uh, we'll catch you guys next time and uh, have a good week All right. see yous